hopefully this is not a surprise to you, but it looks like Chrome, right? And so uh, internally we joke around as saying Chrome is Chrome OS, right? Uh, and uh, Chrome is the OS for all practical purposes. Having said that, there are many, many interesting changes in Chrome, which I'm going to walk you through to make it function like an operating system. Uh, the advantage of doing it this way is it's very familiar and intuitive to most users. Almost everyone knows how to use a browser, so we just want it to feel that way. The second thing I want to say before I walk through the UI is, at this stage of the project, we are opening up the project a year ahead of release. So we are actually iterating through the UI. I had to convince the team to stop checking in code so that we can cut a build to freeze it for the demo, right? We are, we are checking in code as we speak. So a lot of the UI is going to change. I'm not fully sure how it will turn out, but one thing I can guarantee is it won't be exactly like what you're looking at today. Having said that, there are many, many important concepts here which we are very sure will carry over to the final product. So I'm going to focus on covering those aspects for you first. So to start with, it looks like Chrome, but on the top left-hand side, you're seeing some small tabs. We call these application tabs. So you can take any of your favorite applications. In my case, it's Gmail and Calendar, etc. But it could be Facebook, it could be Yahoo Mail, whatever users want. You can take any application and with one click, pin it to be a favorite application. And once you do that, we call these application tabs. We are working very hard to make it possible for you to get to your favorite applications instantly. So once you choose something as an application tab, they always stay in place. So let's open a few tabs. As you can see, CAN is opening a few tabs, but the, but the application tabs on the top left, the five of them, don't move at all. So you can open, close, etc. They all method of accessing your applications, there is on the top left hand side, you have something what we call as the app menu. So caveat, the UI here is going to change, but the concept is we really want you to be able to discover new applications as well as access your top applications. So let's go around and start poking around the app menu. I am noticing an interesting app called Contacts, so let's try that out. Something interesting happened something pop from below. Internally, we call these as molds because they kind of come from underground. But we're going to call them panels uh, externally. So panels are something uh, which these are persistent, lightweight windows, which you can have them around with you all the time. They are persistent. So for example, let's click on a few tabs. They don't, they don't move at all, right? And, and the, the panel stays. It's a persistent window. There are several interesting use cases for it. You can minimize them and make them go away, and you can bring them back. We're going to work hard to make sure we can automatically manage panels for users. Uh, so this is a chat window. So Ken is chatting with David, one of the engineers on the team. And hopefully David says hi back. There you go. So buddy list and chat is a great example of how you would use a panel. Let's see what other use cases for panels are there. So let's poke around. There's Notepad. So let's click on Notepad as an example. So one more panel. The interesting thing about Chrome OS is I mentioned all data is in the cloud. So what does that mean? So Can is going to type something here. And maybe we should go to Google Docs and open his notepad file. You can see it's right there in the cloud. All data in Chrome OS is in the cloud. So as a model, anything you put on the machine is instantly available to you from anywhere, So which is something we are very, very excited about. Let me show one more use case for panels. Let's type U2 in the Chrome Omnibox. Recently, we launched this very cool music feature called Music One Box, by which you can type in names of songs and play it right off the Google search page. So let's click on Beautiful Day. You can see a panel popped up. And it plays right in place. It's a persistent window. You can leave it there. You can minimize it and keep working. Right? You can use this to stream music from the web. So these are interesting examples of how we expect people to use panels before we get caught up in the song, so let's wrap it up. <laughs> so yeah, if, you, uh, if you go to the, well, let's go poke around in the app menu once more. Um, books is, today I struggle when I go on vacations and stuff to carry my DVD player, my computer, my book reader, etc. The great thing about netbooks is these are ultralight, thin mobile devices. 
And once battery times get much better, you can carry them around with you as general purpose devices. So we actually expect these to be great entertainment devices. People should be able to watch videos, play music, play games, books, etc. So let's see how the experience looks like. So I'm an avid chess player, so I have this chess game which I use uh, on my Chrome OS machine. And you can now, it's just a flash. Is it working? OK, so it's great. So Can is playing the chess game. You can see how it's very easy and visual, and you can, enter, you can make it full screen more and take over the screen. So these are good examples of what we expect people to do with these machines. In fact, uh, another good example of what you can do is read books. So for example, we are working hard on this experience, and we have ways to go. But if you look at Google Books, for example, here is Alice in Wonderland. So you can have it on your netbook in a full screen mode, and, and you can read conveniently. It's, you know, these are scanned books which are available. And I can totally imagine reading it to my daughter. Uh, you know,